Hello, hi, how are you? I hope you're good. Today we're going to be talking about my most anticipated reads or new release books that will be coming out in 2022. I don't know what I just said there, but I hope you got the gist of it. Anyway, look at my new mug, Jurassic Park. Do you see that? Do you see that? This is a huge mug too. It's the size is amazing. My coworker bought this for me for Christmas and it's the most incredible thing ever, honestly. Look at that. I love it so much. Anyway, moving on to the most anticipated reads of 2022 that I think look pretty cool. I don't know. I discovered these like five seconds ago. I have about six or seven. Let's get started. First, I have House of Sky and Breath, which is the second book in Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass. I own two copies of Crescent City. Why? I don't know. One was a gift, one I bought myself. I read Crescent City. I loved it during peak COVID, I think, uh, when we were on lockdown, I read that book, just laying in bed, and I really, really liked it. And the second book is coming out um, in, I don't know, maybe February, possibly, and I really want to read it because despite that book being incredibly long and a little ridiculous at times, it is fun because it's paranormal, it is high stakes, there's romance, it's spicy at times, and I just had a blast. It kind of reminded me of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I can't speak. It reminded me of that a little bit here and there, so I'm really looking forward to the second book because, I mean, honestly, I'm not a big fan of Sarah J. Mass, but Crest city I don't know I'm here for it I'm pretty here for it so we'll see um, the next book that I thought looked really interesting is called the book of cold cases by Simone st. James and this one looked really really cool um, I don't know when it comes out sometime next year I'll put the date somewhere this one looked really interesting because it's about a girl who is currently running a podcast I think she works at a let's see she works at a hotel maybe uh, oh no she's a receptionist and then she runs into this lady who was acquitted um, from these murders back in the day, like 30 years ago. And she asked her, hey, can I interview you um, about these murders that you were acquitted, but people thought you did it. So she goes and she talks to this lady, they meet regularly and they you know, start chatting about this murder here and there. And this girl probably starts finding out too much. Who knows? I don't really know. But it looks really cool because I love any sort of true crime podcast. I listen to those for pure enjoyment. I love those things. I used to listen to them going back and forth to work all the time. I haven't listened to a good podcast, true crime podcast in a while. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. So the fact that this book kind of plays with that a little bit and is a thriller, I'm all on board. I really want to read it. The ratings look really good so far as well. The next book that I thought looked really intriguing, in fact the cover is what really drew me in, is The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. This comes out in March by Tor Books. And this one, I love the cover. As you can see, obviously the cover is really pretty, but also it's supposed to be more of a gothic slow burn sort of story and I don't know much more than that. The summary says the bone orchard is a fascinating whodunit set in a lush gothic world of secrets and magic where a dying emperor charges his favorite concubine with solving his own murder and pre preventing the culprit which undoubtedly is one of his three terrible sons from taking control of an empire. I'm all on board. Gothic? Emperor? a whodunit. I love a good whodunit. Who doesn't? So yeah, that one looks pretty good. We'll see. I don't know. Next, obviously, on my list is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. This is book two of the Blood Sworn Saga, Shadow of the Gods. I read beginning of this year and fell absolutely in love. The second book comes out in April. April is my birth month. Best birthday gift ever, honestly. And this cover looks absolutely incredible. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, great. Um, if you love fantasy, if you love anything uh, that talks about gods and war and battles and epic characters and mm, so good. So good. I'm so excited. John Gwynn is an incredible. If you haven't read The Faithful and the Fallen, go do that. And if you haven't read um, The Shadow of the Gods, do that too. Read that too. What am I saying? Moving on. Ooh, 
Ooh, this one sounds so good. It's called Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This one comes out February of this year by Tor, I believe. And oh, the, the line that they give you is hooks you immediately. It says, Titanic meets The Shining. Are you on board? I'm on board. Basically, it's this woman and her crew. They're in space, and then they they find this uh, ghost ship, and they try to um, uh, see what's going on in in the the ship and see if if there's anyone there. Um, and that's all I know. It says a ghost ship, a salvage crew, unspeakable horrors. Um, yes, please. One of my favorite movies of all time is called Ghost Ship, and obviously that's set on the sea, and it's a salvage crew, and there are ghosts and whatnot, but this one's set in space. On it, I don't care, though. I don't care. I don't care that it's set in space. It's equally as terrifying, to be honest, so I'm so excited. If you like science fiction and horror, this is the perfect book, probably for you. And the reviews that I've read so far are so positive, so I'm so pumped. I'm buying this immediately. I might even pre-order, and I don't even pre-order books, so, well, I don't know but i'm really excited moving on the next book that i thought looked really cool is called the hacienda and this is supposed to be mexican gothic meets rebecca two of these both of these things honestly i read mexican gothic loved it i read rebecca absolutely loved it new favorite as well the fact that this book is supposed to be a combi a combination of both sounds incredible we all know rebecca it's a woman who meets this rich man she marries him on a whim and then she goes with him to his like mansion and there she realizes he has like a dead wife and so she feels like she has to compare to this dead wife and can't really compete and then she kind of thinks she's seeing the ghost or so you think and so that's Rebecca and then Mexican Gothic is this really really good horror uh, story uh, set in Mexico and we follow this I don't want to give spoilers obviously for any of these but the fact that these two are combined this story um, the Hacienda is set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence so it should be really fascinating so I'm so excited I, I just oh this looks so good it's like it comes out in May by Berkeley so keep your eyes out for that maybe and the last book is a good classic apocalyptic book that i'm just so excited for those are my favorites um this is called black tide by casey jones this one comes out also in may and this one is about two random people who have nothing to do with one another but they randomly i guess just um bump into each other but then they're stuck together because i guess the end of the world happens they don't realize it i think they're in oregon um something happens there's like meteors that hit the ocean and then all of a sudden creatures start coming out of the ocean i don't know what creatures and then like everyone dies and it's the apocalypse and it's called black tide so you know use your imagination right um it looks really good the synopsis says let's see it, it was just another day at the beach and then the world ended which <laughs> that just that's how you hook someone right um at least me so yeah i think those are all the books that i'm interested in reading um i discovered these all within the last day or two so we'll see i don't know i'm excited i would love to know what you're excited to read um new books old books um, books that you own that have been sitting on your shelf for years and years i have to tackle those i think there's a cat hair in my tea yeah there's definitely a cat hair in my tea that's what happens when you own two cats and a dog i'll still probably drink it anyway i'm gonna go i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> bye